And now, here's another fascinating secret of seafood from the old chowderhead himself, Ivor. If you've been around Puget Sound for any length of time, you probably know me. But some of the kids in the audience have been writing in, wondering if I'm real. Yes, I'm for real, and I'm not Colonel Sanders' illegitimate son. I'm not even his cousin, for goodness sake. He's been called the P.T. Barnum of Puget Sound. But others insist that old Barnum was never half as clever as Seattle's Ivor Haglin. A self-effacing showman of Swedish-Norwegian stock, Ivor started out with an interest in finance, but he wound up as a folk singer, an aquarium owner, and a restaurateur. Oh, and he even put in a single six-year term during the 1980s as a Seattle port commissioner. Could we turn and smile now? Although he filed for political office only as a publicity gag, he wound up winning by 30,000 votes. He was that well known and appreciated. After all, his name was up in lights all over town. Carl, how far can a sea squirt squirt? Will the sea squirt squirt if his feelings are hurt? Ivor's father was a baker, and his mother's immigrant family had purchased Alki Point, the original town site of Seattle, from none other than pioneer David Doc Maynard. Ivor Haglin was born in 1905, and unlike his reclusive dad, he proved to be a natural performer. During get-togethers with his cousins in West Seattle, he'd play the ukulele and sing. He even learned to tap dance. As Ivor grew older, he'd do all three at the same time for appreciative audiences, telling jokes in between numbers. Yet when Ivor graduated from the University of Washington in 1928, it was with a degree in economics. He had anticipated a career in the stock market. Unfortunately, a year later, Seattle and the rest of the U.S. were smacked by the Great Depression. Stockbrokers were suddenly in very low demand. Deep in the waters of Puget Sound, many, many strange things are found. Ivor wasn't without other money-making prospects, though. Following a 1938 visit with cousins who ran an aquarium in Seaside, Oregon, he decided to follow their entrepreneurial lead. He set up his Seattle Aquarium, the city's first, at Pier 54 on the waterfront, stocking his tanks mostly with what he caught from the adjacent sound plus a few imported crowd pleasers like Pat the Seal. Years later, Ivor was asked whether he'd actually known anything about running an aquarium. No, he conceded, I just thought it was a neat way to collect dimes. It also, though, introduced him to the restaurant biz. After watching a friend's fish and chips counter open and then fail at the aquarium, Heglin decided to create his own seafood eatery. Ivor's Acres of Clams served its first meals at Pier 54 in 1946. No more than three cups of clam nectar per married man. I'm Ivor and I enforce that rule. I don't want you to get crowned. They're too expensive. A ham right down to the bone. Ivor did whatever he could to publicize his restaurant and promote himself in the process. Oh, how do you get down to Ivor's? Acres of clams, please show me the way. Oh, it's easy to get down to Ivor's. Just to stop before you walk in the bay. You'll he wrote pun-filled songs for radio and television. And we're open every he held clam-eating contests. And in 1947, after a train tank car hose broke, spilling thousands of gallons of syrup here in Alaskan Way, right across from the acres of clams, Ivor rushed over with a plate full of pancakes and started spooning up the spilled sweetener. As newspaper photographers snapped away, he told curious onlookers, eat at Ivor's, we don't skimp on the syrup. What Ivor may be best remembered for, though, is the slogan, Keep Clam, which still adorns the chain of eateries he spawned, and which led in 1960 to his printing official-looking postage stamps, featuring the tasty mollusks. It was just another Ivor prank, 
but the U.S. Postal Service didn't even crack a grin. Instead, the feds quickly confiscated and then incinerated Ivor's clam stamps. Home, home when the rain Where the drips from the cloud and the tree Where the wind seldom blows And all year blooms a rose Puget Sound is where I long to be We had a lot of fun decorating Ivers with those Norwegian net floats. Ivor Hagelin always seemed to find a wee bit more humor in life than the next guy. In 1976, after buying Seattle's historic and revered Smith Tower, Ivor ran a 16-foot salmon-shaped windsock up the flagpole at its peak. And then he chuckled as flustered city bureaucrats tripped all over their regulations trying to make him remove the too whimsical banner. Sure, Ivor had his cantankerous moments, but he was a kid at heart. No wonder he created in 1965 what has become a Seattle tradition, the Ivers 4th of July fireworks blowout over Elliott Bay. As happy as a butter clam when tides are high, I sing a grateful ode to Puget Sound, the land of everything. I love it from Tulalip to Puyallup, swim and pish. And to the dosy wallops where so many times I fished. The city was shocked when this captain of kitsch, this unofficial mayor of the waterfront, died in January 1985, just shy of his 80th birthday. A land that nature loves so much, she stays the whole year round. I trade a royal palace for a shack on Puget Sound. He'd been entertaining Seattle for half a century, feeding its residents and its seagulls for nearly that long. Without him, things just seem, well, a little fishy. For Eccentric Seattle, this is Jay Kingston Pierce.